welcome. Well, thank you and uh, thank you for getting up this early to talk about Swastikas and welcome. Uh, what happened? Yesterday there were the Amaze Awards and the game won as the most amazing game, but it wasn't shown here. Why? Because Swastikas and stuff like that is forbidden in Germany. Or is it? And that's what we want to talk about today. I know it's, it's called an open discussion, but we have to lay the groundworks. Because most people know, okay, there, there's something going on in Germany, why we can't see swastikas and stuff like that in games, but not many know exactly now. But I want to ask, who's from Germany right here? Please raise your hands, okay? Um, who knows, who of you knows that swastikas and games are forbidden? Please keep your hands up and leave them up if you exactly know why. See, this is one of the things we try <laughs> to talk about today. So, we'll start with that, and then when we cleared all that, we will get into the discussion. And if you have a question that you want to ask later on, please always use the microphone so that the recording can also listen to you. So, um, First, the boring part, the legal groundwork. There's a, I'm sorry, there will be a lively discussion, but first we have to, to look, you know, the, the basic things. So there's a paragraph, Kai Bodensieg, you're a lawyer, you will say somewhere in this discussion, swastikas are not forbidden, but everyone feels like they are. And the reason for that is the paragraph 86, a of the criminal law of Germany, which states that the use of anti-constitutional symbols, no, 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 the use of symbols for anti-constitutional organizations is forbidden. Why? What? How? What does this paragraph say? Where does it come from? And yeah, you know, what is it? Um, Please use the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Now I've got a mic. Um, yeah, um, hi. Um, the boring part. Uh, where does it come from? I believe um, that's, that's quite obvious. I mean, uh, we all are aware of uh, the situation during the th Second World War and afterwards uh, the um, uh, nationalist parties uh, were banned in Germany as well as their symbols and the propaganda. Um, so as part of the criminal code, the use of these symbols of um, of agencies that are working against the German constitution have been banned in Germany. That's what, what we have in uh, paragraph 86a um, of the criminal code. Um, so basically any kind of use of constitutional, anti-constitutional symbols have been banned um, and therefore um, the idea is at least not totally uh, totally wrong that we could consider that swastikas in games could also be banned. Okay, so, but to make it clear, the, um, the, the law is not only about swastikas, it's no. also about Hitler's face? It is, it is also um, about the likeness of Hitler, it's about the SS runes, it's about all different symbols that have been used uh, during the Third Reich and by the, uh, by the Nazi organizations, yeah. So, and what happens if you break that law? Well, the same thing that happens if you break uh, any criminal code. Usually, you are uh, you pursued by uh, uh, by the uh, by the public um, administrators, and then you're sued in court. And uh, in best case, you're fined a monetary fine, and in the worst case, you're going to prison. Did that happen for the use of swastikas in yes. Germany? Yes, yes, sure, it does on a regular level. So, but then, like for every rule. There are exceptions. Yes. For instance, if you there's a, an icon which is used by the left of a fist destroying a swastika. Mm -hmm. Some people try to make a case it's use of a swastika and forbidden. No, it was not. Which are the exceptions to this rule? Yes. Um, 
we, on, we don't only have the paragraph 86A, but we also have the paragraph 86 of the criminal code. Um, paragraph 86, which is addressing propaganda for anti-constitutional organizations, has um, an exception, an exception in um, subsection 3 um, that addresses um, the, exact the issue of um, colliding constitutional rights. In our constitution, we have freedom of speech, we have freedom of art, we have freedom of teaching and science, um, and these freedoms obviously collide with such, uh, with such a law that forbids certain content. So in case that uh, the uh, symbols are used as part of art, as part of cultural products, as part of educational products, as part of teaching, um, they're not banned, they're allowed for the use. And I, I believe everybody knows that because um, everybody of you has seen movies containing swastikas here in Germany. So um, this exception applies to all kinds of art. And movies are obviously kind of art and culture. Okay, so we will come back to that point. But um, there's the question that already arises here is, are could computer games be under these exceptions? So could, be, could computer games be art? So Marie, you're working at uh, Arte France, yes. which is like, every, everyone knows Arte, what Arte is. Please raise your hands if you know who Arte is. Okay, for all the other people, Arte is a public, publicly controlled TV station, a joint venture between France and Germany with a high focus on cultural aspects of our life. So, you're doing that, and, and it's a TV station, but it's a TV station gone digital media outlet, and you're doing games. Why? Um, yes, yeah, since, since about 10 years, we are trying to address new content for new audiences, uh, mostly present uh, on internet and we are trying to tell stories in another way than films or documentaries are telling until now on uh, our broad uh, TV, our TV channel. So we are making video games since about five years. It's natural for us to go on that uh, scene because we want to, to help uh, game designer, a young game designer to, um, to, to fund and produce uh, their project, as we do with film or documentaries. We are considering video game as a piece of art. So, and we want to, to sustain this industry as we do with others since already 20, more than 20 years. Yeah. And would you say every game is art? Or would you say there are games that are art? Hard question. Uh, <laughs> what is art? <laughs> yes. Um, no, I think we are trying to to help this indie uh, scene to uh, to make their project because it is art. I don't know what the blockbuster video games are. <laughs> Probably also kind of art, but uh, they don't need us, and we are yeah we are supporting uh, this new author, creator, game designer, etc. And is there also edu an educational aspect? Not, not in the strict sense that, okay, you can learn this thing from this game, but in the more broader sense that society can benefit from the games you do. Yes and no. As, as Arte, we are waiting for us to make games that we that we learn something to the audience, but it's not our priority. Uh, our priorities are more focused on making uh, creative games, so with a strong atmosphere, beautiful um, uh, artistic direction, um, with uh, strong stories. I think. The main important thing for me as commissioning, fin, as interactive commissioning editor, is to, yeah, to 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 help uh, great and strong stories to 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 be produced, and I think we can do that with video game. And uh, now here in Germany we have the paragraph 86. 
Does that play a role for you? I've never heard about that before <laughs> last week. <laughs> But yes, um, um, as Arte, we, we couldn't produce a game with Swatika in it because we are found by German people and French people and our production uh, are al always um, released on these both countries. So I can't imagine making of producing a game that we couldn't uh, release, uh, that couldn't be released in Germany. So it's complicated to deal with that for, for me as Arte. Uh, okay, so what, what we learned up until now is there's criminal law that forbids the use of swastikas and other symbols and iconography. There's an exception to this rule. Games could fall under this exception and we have one example of a game that uses swastika and maybe is an exception or could be an exception to this rule. It's Attentat 1942. But could you please for everyone who has not heard about the most amazing game of the year, What is your game about and why are swastikas heavily featured in it? Well, uh, maybe we can start with a trailer so everybody can see what's the game about. So it's like short two minutes trailer and yeah, then I will kind of talk about it. It's the German version, no fear. You will not go to prison for watching this. Pak dědu odvedli a já jsem si nikdy nemyslela, že ho uvidím až po válce. Proč vašeho dědu zatkli, to jsme se vlastně nikdy nedopátrali. Byl to zlej sen. Takže se ani nedivím tvému dědečkovi, že o tom nechce mluvit. Okay, so um, it's essentially a serious game on uh, the civilian perspective of Second World War, of Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia. And it has been made by Charles University and by the Czech Academy of Sciences. So we had like historians actually producing this game. We had like six historians in team. And the game is based on real testimonies and historical research and kind of presents you the, uh, what was like kind of uh, the period of time when Ren Heydrich, the, the uh, uh, Reich's protector of, uh, or of, uh, of the protoid Bermond and Marin was assassinated and there was like a brutal Nazi reprisals. And you kind of see this period of time through eight different characters, different civilians who lived uh, at the time. Uh, the game was actually originally produced as an educational tool for Czech high schools. So in Czech Republic, this game is freely distributed to high schools and they are like Currently, like 15 to 20 percent of Czech high school teachers, history teachers, are using the game. But um, we wanted, when we saw the kind of the success of the game uh, in Czech schools, we decided we would like to turn it into normal commercial game, which is not only for like formal education in schools, but which would be for everyone, you know. And we would like to sell it through Steam. So that's when the decision came that we translate the game into English, Russian, and possibly German, and put it normally on the global market so everybody can download it and, and play it. That's what happened, the game is out, uh, can be bought everywhere except in Germany. And uh, Why? Why did you yeah. decide to do that? Yeah, uh, the reason is uh, 
because that we, we know about this, uh, about this law, and also about the, it's not only the law, and I think Kai will talk more about that, it's about the process of approving games for the German market, which is, I don't know if I want to talk about it, it's kind of Kai's uh, issue, but I can. So if you want to sell a game on German market, um, you need to have a uh, rating by USK, by, by some, by some uh, agency, and, and essentially, uh, they will not give you a rating if you are swastikas in the game, regardless of the context or regardless of uh, of uh, the aim of the game. If it's like educational, if it's product of research or, or whatever, because there is a kind of internal guidelines uh, which are late from the 1998 uh, from the uh, from the Wolfenstein uh, case ruling. So we are kind of stuck in a situation where if you want to have like approval that the game is legal in Germany, we have to go to this organization, but they will not most probably approve us. And, 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 and so, of course, there is the last thing, of course we can kind of uh, clandestinely publish the game with, without any approval and just wait if we are sued by someone and defend our game at court, but it's something Charles University and the Czech Academy of Sciences is not really uh, happy about. Okay, so this is where we step back to the lawyer part of this whole thing, because we learned about the paragraph 86. We also learned there could be an exception. We also learned, from what we know from right now, this game, or maybe all games, could be accepted. But there was a case, and there was a ruling. <laughs> and it's a long, long, long time ago. And we can't, here in Germany, play games with Sussex Island because of that ruling from 89. Kai, take us back. What happened? Okay, I'm taking you back to a time when the internet was still something that only freaks have heard of. And um, data was exchanged not via the internet, but through so-called mailbox systems. These mailbox systems were dial-in systems where you used your own modem or acoustic uh, uh, a connector, you know, you, you put your phone into this device and then you could communicate with other computers, Re really back time. And on these mailbox systems, um, people exchanged small games, uh, letters, graphics, so on. And there was a, a right-wing uh, network of mailboxes in that time that was called the Tulanet. Tulanet was organized by right-wing organizations throughout Germany, and they exchanged propaganda materials all through Germany by using these mailbox systems. And they did not only exchange propaganda materials, but also Wolfenstein II. So when the police um, did a search at one of these uh, mailbox systems, they not only found propaganda material, but they also found copies of Wolfenstein II. So they found a game where you shoot people with swastikas in it. So uh, what did the public prosecution do? They filed um, a criminal case against them for distributing propaganda, but also for distributing games with swastikas in it, which was obviously banned by paragraph 86A of the German Criminal Code. And what did the court do? The court did the obvious thing. I mean, there was a right-wing network. There were, there were uh, um, obviously uh, Nazi organizations behind that, and they were exchanging games with swastikas in it, so they were prosecuted. And uh, in the, uh, in the final sentence, the court uh, wrote that the use of swastikas in games was an obvious violation of paragraph 86A uh, criminal code, but what they did not do at that time, and that is worth mentioning since we did the opening already, they did not at any point consider that this game could have been at least some kind of art or cultural product. So they didn't actually play the game or uh, look at the contents? We don't know anymore. We don't have the, the files anymore because, I mean, it's long gone. The files have been destroyed in the meantime. They're not available anymore. We only know the sentencing. And you don't, um, you can't see from the sentencing what they did. Actually, I believe they only got the, the uh, information from the public prosecutor that there was a game where we were supposed to shoot someone using swastikas. I, I'm quite sure they did not have a look at the game, or even if they had, they m would not have considered that being art, being in the 90s, being in a case of right-wing propaganda material, um, and 
probably not having a lawyer at hand that pleaded for cultural content. So there was this ruling in 89. I mean, the, the ruling was in 84 and then went to different courts and the last ruling of that was in 89. And um, you could like wonder, okay, that's been like a lifetime ago. Couldn't have somebody went there and tried to publish a game. But it somehow got rooted in the process of regulating game. And it's not only about this ruling, but what this ruling did to the USK, which is here in Germany, the body which gives the age ratings. And to the B BPJM, mm -hmm. there's, like, there's, there's an institution which reads media only if they are allowed on the market or not. And uh, what did happen? Um, well, later we founded the USK, which is a self-writing uh, institution here in Germany, which is operated by the games industry, uh, at least uh, founded by the games industry, and does write games uh, according to their age. Um, the USK does only have the power to give such age ratings because they have been empowered by the highest um, youth protection agencies of the German states. So they are bound by the, um, by the basic rules that have been issued by these highest youth protection agencies of the, of the German federal states. And in accordance with this obviously wrong decision from... We'll come to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but in, in accordance with the, with the Wolfenstein 2 decision, um, they made part of these rules that any game that does contain swastikas at all is not to be rated because it is considered to be possibly illegal and therefore it should not receive an age rating. Okay, so let me recap, if I understood correctly. There's an institution in Germany which takes back to this ruling from 89 and says, okay, every game with swastika could fall under this ruling. That's why you should not give an age rating for it. So the USK doesn't give an age rating at all. They don't even consider it. Consider it. So it's not possible to publish it in a way where you can buy it? Mm, it's not possible to publish it on, uh, in retail because of the, uh, the rules of the German Youth Protection Act, um, that's again something between federal states and, uh, um, and, and our national state, that uh, the Youth Protection Act does only apply to um, retail distribution. So you could publish it online without any such age rating, though in that case it's your risk that you publish it and if it is um, actually endangering uh, the youth, you can be sued for that. Like in a criminal court. Exactly, which could not happen if you have an age rating. Okay, so do, does anyone know, do, do Steam like take games that uh, are not published in retail for Germany? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so it would, it would be possible, but then it's on the risk of the developer of the game yep. or the publisher of the game. And also, also for Steam, I mean, if, if, Steam publishes, if, if Steam allows you to publish a game without USK rating and you are sued, then actually Steam might be confined complicit in, in distributing, the, because they are fact, actually, like, factually distributing the game in Germany. So all developers who want to go to German market actually go, even if they want to do it through Steam, they go to USK for rating kind of be sure, so. Okay. Or it's common practice to do that, or to yeah. prepare a special German edition with but, all the swastikas deleted. Mm -hmm. But just to be sure, um, that is a consideration by Steam to do that. It's yeah. not that the German state says you're not allowed to do that, just a consideration by Steam that they want to make sure that they are not at any kind of legal risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so the last, last debate we had about this topic was when the last Wolfenstein came out because they made an, an extra version where there not only were the swastikas removed but also the beard of Hitler which is maybe because you can't show pictures of Hitler and they removed all occurrences. They didn't talk about Nazis, they talked about the regime. Um, and I'm wondering, is, is there a legal way to go 
and say we want to fight this ruling from 89 or we want to show that the ruling maybe was correct but not is for every game i mean you're the you're the legal counsel for the german um Verband of yeah, game yeah, developers. I, I, I was and until. Oh, you were. Uh, yeah, Sorry, okay. um, but but you cannot fight the original decision anymore. I mean that's over and done. Um, what you could do um, is you go to USK. You ask them to rate the game, they will say, no, sorry, we're not allowed to give you a rating. And then you can go to administrative court and sue and say, you have to give us an H rating because um, the rule that not granting an H rating, if there's any swastika in that, is unconstitutional. You, you could do that, yeah, for sure. Why hasn't done it anybody? Two things. First, um, if you want to get a hearing at an administrative court, takes about a year. Okay. So from suing till the first hearing, um, it's usually here in Berlin, about a year. If you want to actually distribute a new game, you don't want to go to court for a year before starting distribution. Second thing is a little bit more political. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is one year for the first hearing. For would the first. It, would it be over about that? Oh, or no, would you sure. say, like, <laughs> no, they would escalate to higher court and then yeah. it, like. Yeah, it would escalate then to the, uh, to the upper administrative court here in Berlin. Um, then it would escalate to the federal administrative court. Um, and then it would escalate to the constitutional court. Each time, one and a half years at least. Okay, so we're what, like eight years now? Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Okay, so one, one would ha basically one would have to write a game explicitly for the purpose of suing. At least you should not rely on income and during that time, yeah. Okay, couldn't you like publish the game without Swastikas and also publish a version with and then do it? You could. Um, I mean, um, you could do that. Um, it would be at your own private risk to do that because there is at least a small probability that a state prosecutor uh, from somewhere in Germany will take mm -hmm. up the case and, and will prosecute you. Um, I'm depending on, on how the game is made, what content the game is made of. It's pretty likely, until, no, it's not pretty likely, it's very likely that you'll not be prosecuted um, and that the case would be dismissed but you never get a 100% on that. Mm. So what I'm also wondering is, uh, we're talking about the attentat soon, but there's you know, Bethesda with Wolfenstein, and they have, I guess, not a small, it's not, not, not a small thing to do to rewrite the game, in a way, to remove all the swastikas, to rewrite the text and stuff like that. Isn't that not as expensive as doing the court thing? Um, well, the one thing is, again, it takes you eight years until mm -hmm. you're sure what you get. So your game will be gone. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is political. Um, if you go to court as Bethesda and say, we want swastikas in our games in Germany, and you should win the case, um, you know who's standing outside applauding you? Maybe not the right people. Yeah, so um, you'll, you'll be the liberator of swastikas in Germany. Is that the title you want to have uh, as a game publisher? I mean, you will have a lot of bad press. You will have applause from the wrong side. Um, you, you will work for the side you actually don't want to. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, from a political point of view, it's, it's a double-bladed edge. Uh, yeah, it's a double-edged blade, sorry. Yeah. Um, so you could do that. You would defend constitutional rights, that's for sure, and you will likely win that case. But in the end, um, yeah, you will do the work for those people you don't want to. I mean, you, you, you would, like, as in the, in the case of Wolfenstein, you would, you would uh, go for a game that's about shooting Nazis in the face, but you would still get the wrong applause. That's, yes. that's sad. So, the other way one could do it is, which Wolfenstein does, is like remove all the swastikas from the game. In Attentat, you decided not to do that. There's also, the game is, I mean, if you pretend to be in Sweden and have a PayPal account, you can even play it here in Germany, I've heard from friends. <laughs> and uh, those friends have told me that uh, there's much uh, documentary pictures like moving pictures, with, and the, in, the, in the painted, in the illustrated part of the game, the swastikas are very, very, very seldom. Yeah. 
why, why did you, you could do a version like remove all the footage and repaint the pictures and I mean, it's, would, it's, it would still be a strong stance. Uh, why did you do that? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, in our game, we are using uh, actual archival footage, which we got from the National Film Archive of Czech Republic, and it's quite rare digital footage. Some of it was never used before. Uh, and we got like, hours of that footage um, uh, to accompany the uh, testimonies of the witnesses. Uh, we actually were thinking about that, and I'm, the, the thing is, like, frankly, we don't know, we are kind of in a, we are kind of stuck with this game because we really want to publish it in Germany. Uh, we think it's really important, especially in this time, and, and we, we are still finding ways, and we don't, we haven't really decided. Uh, there's like really intense debate in the team what to do with it, and uh, the, the, there are two things with, the, with censoring the game. One is practical. When we went through the footage, there's not that much plastica. We like we didn't really, you know, deliberately use them. We just used the footage, for, for example, where it's like Heidi funeral and there's plasticas everywhere, etc., etc. But then we discovered there is much more in the footage that need to be deleted because there is, for example, a lot of people in the background signaling, or there's a lot of people's uniforms with like uh, totem cops, like like small symbols which are also forbidden, and we would have to remove a lot of content from the game. Essentially, we would have to remove most of the Nazis, uh, Nazi, Nazi officials, and that is like uh, so. It's, it's very costly, and it's very like uh, it's like it costs a lot, like a sort of work to do that. And second thing is, uh, there is really strong debate if we should do that because it's actually a game showing the atrocities of the Nazi regime and showing the yeah like testimonies of people who struggled and, 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 and uh, or lost their lives uh, because of this because of this uh, regime and we would actually remove the you know the the the, the, the officials and the, like the representatives of, of this of this of this regime from the game so in a way it's kind of very historical uh, and and it's almost like whitewashing you know like showing the atrocities of the regime without actually showing the real Nazis yeah so and I'm our historians would be definitely not be happy with like with this with this decision to like you know removing the actual historical facts from historically very accurate game. So uh, that's 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 an open issue. Uh, so so in a way, I mean, okay, I'm going out on a limb here, but in a way, the paragraph 86 in Germany is protecting the Nazis because you can't show how horrible they were. Marie, uh, can you like? Uh, would that be a game you think Arte would be interested in? It's complicated because um, I'm not sure that German people um, paying their tax every year to finance Arte um, would be, I mean, every people would be happy that we would produce that game. Um, we are kind of political institution as public broadcaster. So if there is this law, I think we have to respect it and that we couldn't produce a game that we couldn't, uh, that couldn't be released in Germany. So complicated. But, 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 but um, at the beginning when I asked about uh, the, the change from a TV station to a digital media outlet, you said, you know, new media forms are coming. Yeah. We, have, we have to go there because that's the reality of the people. And isn't, like, you could do a documentary yeah. about, uh, or even a mockumentary about the Third Reich, but you can't do a game which is this, from the same perspective. Isn't that like blindsiding the public in a certain way? Um, in the last months, we we released uh, this game called Bury Me My Love. Mm -hmm. It's about immigration, and when we decided to make this game, we thought it is maybe um, more accuracy to do a game about this topic than a documentary. A documentary because there is so much documentary film about this topic, and uh, it, I think maybe we will. Uh, have a stronger impact with a game. So we wanted to make something with a strong impact, and I think a video game can have a strong impact. But I'm not sure that um, using uh, public funding to make a game that, that could be only released in France and not in Germany, but financed by German people would be possible. So yeah, it's, it's difficult, and as you said, it's also a political issue. Uh, who wants to uh, 
spread uh, swastika in our context uh, right now, our political context in Europe with, uh, yeah, with uh, this extreme right, uh, yeah. such uh, strong today. Yeah. Okay, th this is the point where it's get difficult and muddy, but it's also what to use that uh, point to ask the first time if you have any questions right now. If you have, one, two, three, someone here, four, please step up to the microphone and ask. Uh, hi, very informative, by the way. Um, my question is, couldn't this ruling be changed by a legislative approach by making a law that allows explicitly games to be um, showing images like this? Yeah. So, like, could, could, the, could the state or the great coalition that it's called here in Germany go and say, okay, we don't want uh, that any publisher has to have the, the hassle of suing, uh, we're just, like, making a denim... 86A.1, <laughs> games are art and social adequate for the purpose of this paragraph. Would that be possible? The legislator can do that for sure. Um, basically, it's not needed um, since um, already now games are considered art um, and fall under the current exception we have. What we need wouldn't be even a new law, but just acceptance of how the law is to be interpreted by the youth protection agencies we have. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question, please. Also, could you maybe line up behind the microphone that we can be quicker? One, one, one of the problems is that the, the USK is a youth protection agency. Could you speak into the microphone? One of the problems is that the USK is a youth protection agency, and, uh, and actually these paragraphs, 86, 86A, they apply to everyone, not only to youngsters. So actually, I, I agree, you could try to um, kind of convince USK to take some kind of decision there, but they could also say basically, well, it's not our, it's not our range because it's, it, it's something much more fundamental than just the question whether it is applied to the or apt for the youngsters of, of Germany. It's, 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 a, it's kind of a different, different question. Uh, and I wanted also to highlight something because uh, you, you said it and uh, I think that at least those who don't live in Germany or France don't, don't understand what is happening politically at the moment in our countries. We have a very unique situation in Germany. We have now for the first time a, a right-wing party in the parliament. We have a, a really growing right-wing uh, kind of opposition in our country after 70 years after, after the, the World War. So, so I think that... <laughs> Do you have a question? I just say one sentence and then okay. I stop, okay? I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite difficult at this very moment to take legislative actions in this context. That's what I wanted to explain. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so you all, you, the four of you seem to be more or less on, this, uh, uh, on the same side. <laughs> I'll try to phrase it as, you all think that the ruling was conservative back then, and even more so now, and nobody's trying to get a new ruling because everybody's uh, cowards and lazy. But perhaps you, one of you could try to speak if you think there are like, not, not like just like big forces, but like citizens of Germany who might want the situation to remain the same, uh, could you try to speak for them? I don't know if, if that, that even exists. Maybe it's just a bureaucratic uh, uh, problem right now. But, but perhaps would there be people that would rather uh, games remain outside the realm uh, or have as, as least uh, pieces of art with uh, uh, Nazi symbols as possible and could you speak for them or try to get into that mindset to understand maybe the other side of that argument? I don't know if, the, if it exists. Okay, okay. Th there's, there's one side. I would have come to that later but we can like plug it in now. So there, if, you, if you go to creative media and the representation of symbols like that, you have like three stages which you could like illustrate with movies. You know, you have Schindler's Liste, which obviously 
it's okay to show all the iconography there because it's it's moving, but it's also educational. Then we have Inglorious Bastard, which is like entertainment, but in the movie scene it's okay. And then you would have like real Nazi propaganda films, which would be forbidden here in Germany. And when when I. I, I have no studies about it, but when asking around and within the bubble, it's always like, okay, no one says that uh, that educational games and entertainment games like Wolfenstein should stay the way they are. But the question is, if if we go now and allow swastikas and games, how can we make sure that the first two of these categories can use them, but the third, like, you write a simulation of a concentration camp, is still forbidden. Is, can that be made sure? I mean, or is that, is that a real fear why maybe there could be a point to say, no, we leave it like that? Mm. Well, we already do the same thing in the movie sector. Um, we have the equivalent uh, to USK in the movie sector, which is the FSK which grants uh, age ratings to movies. And they're doing exactly this uh, uh, three distinctions between movies and uh, section one and two are get age ratings while the third one act obviously does not. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, w w what you said is, um, is, is there someone thinking another way, a different way? And I believe there, there are people. Yeah, like, and, like, like a, a German argument. person on the street. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and, mm, I think there's a good argument to, to, to think differently. Um, also one which I've heard quite often. Um, if we allow symbols of um, anti-constitutional organizations to become um, a more daily sight in our society, if we give them more public space, um, if we make them part of the daily life, we'll take away the um, the effect we usually have, uh, the, the effect which is, oh my god, this is bad, but it becomes more normal, it becomes um, uh, less uh, a reason uh, to, to become angry, to, to act against it. So um, we, we are reducing our reaction to that, and that's something that you can argue, that you say, no, we don't need more swastikas, even in art, we actually need less, because we have so many right-wing movements at the moment um, that we don't need to marginalize them even more. That, that is the argument that is made against this position. And there's always also the point which is not like uh, we need that, but more like uh, indirectly that people are saying when it comes to games like Wolfenstein, we, we really don't need swastikas to make that point. I mean, that's an anti-fascist game, whether or not you have triangles or a, a swastika inside that. But if you, sorry, if you, if you ban these symbols, don't you make them sexier, make the right feel more like an alt-right? It's always a discussion if you want to ban something, if you, want to, if you ban something it always becomes more interesting. So th that's why you always consider a, a long time before banning anything. Yeah, you know, um, marijuana is banned, yeah, okay. That's a fast stretch, I think. But oh well. Could we have the next Thank question? You. Hi. Yeah, it's been covered a little bit by the previous questions, but um, it feels to me that the, the way to lobby for this is not to pin it on an individual game because of the complications and problems. You've explained how that might uh, affect kind of groups' opinions of that. Could you go closer to the microphone? Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, is, there, is there an argument that we could make, it sounds like, to this um, rating agency that there should be more nuance. As games are considered an art form now, is there an argument to be made that there should be more nuance in rating these as there is already with film? And, and how, would, how would you go about doing that if you weren't going to pin it on an individual piece of work? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, here on the stage, I only understood half of it. I'm very sorry. What was the... Could you just recap the question? Yeah, how do you, how do you uh, make an argument or a presentation to the rating agency that there should be more nuance, as there currently is with film, around 
deciding if a game uh, should be allowed and rateable or not? And, and how would you do it in a game agnostic way so it wasn't pinned as a Nazi sympathizing game when it very clearly isn't, for example? So you mean um, if you started trying to use a political way uh, with, the, with the age rating agencies? Um, yeah, well, um, that, that, that is a work in progress. Um, um, you don't change things uh, from now to tomorrow. Um, we currently have um, a lot of uh, things going on uh, in, the, uh, in the political area con uh, concerning games. Um, for instance, we're currently setting up a game uh, a funding institution here in Germany. And, um, well, how to put it? The issue will be raised not with the age rating agency because they don't decide about it, but with the uh, public authorities of youth protection um, from the federal states. And there will be uh, a discussion, and um, it's just not taking place just yet. Okay. Next question. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm repeating the last question, I just didn't hear it. So, in your own opinions, when do you feel Germany is going to be accepting swastikas in, well, video games? Do you feel it's in the foreseeable future for, like, the lawyer's opinion, the game opinions? I'd like to know personally if in my lifetime I'll be able to play a German game about the war, for example. There's a, that's an interesting question. What we, you could also say, you know, there's a, there's a question about it is going on for quite some years, but the games industry, of course, has other things to do with the political uh, stuff. Like, for instance, right now, there's a big discussion about money. And is, is this discussion maybe something that always get puts behind because there's also always the one thing that is more important than doing that right now, but maybe we do that later? Will that happen? Yeah. Possibly. Um, <laughs> yeah, as I said, being the liberator of swastikas isn't always the number one issue the games industry has. Um, though, um, yes, I'm positive that this will change. Um, I'm positive that we'll have this discussion uh, within the next two years uh, um, in, in a really deeper detail because um, right now we have a strong development in favor of video games here in Germany. Uh, we have been accepted as an important part of cultural uh, development. Um, we've even received um, in a specific spot in the new German government to be represented. Um, as part of, of uh, the German culture and um, yes, we will have this discussion and there will be changes. I cannot say when exactly, but I guess that uh, within the next two or four years there will be changes. Marie, do you, do you think, I mean, public controlled media like has a, I imagine, difficult stance that because at least here in Germany we still have to discuss if public controlled media is even allowed to do games. <laughs> do you think we maybe should uh, kill two birds with one stone and like work for both of it? Like games are art and could show economic sec and we need to do more games? To be frank, um, I, my colleagues in Germany are not producing video games at that time. So do you know why? I think it's because um, my, my opinion is that um, Germany is always, always a bit late than us about this, about, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now Just, it's official. Uh, <laughs> about. No, you, you always, you, you, you're only this, saying what we all think. About all this interactive stuff, I mean. Um, it's also because, it's also something not really interesting for us uh, right now, but it's also because uh, Arte is not uh, organized uh, the same in France and in Germany, because in France we are really centralized, all the production is organized in Paris, all, almost all producers, well, not almost, but a lot of producers are based in Paris, and it's really easy for us to develop those inter interactive production. Arte in Germany, uh, it's people working for Arte, but also for other 
regional uh, TV channel like uh, ZDF, uh, BR, etc. So it's really complicated to to um, to um, to make a, d a department, an interactive department in Germany. There is no real interactive uh, production. Uh, but should they? But should they do it? But I think yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not up to that about that. Yeah. If I meet them, I'll tell them. <laughs> it would happen. Okay. Um, Vid, now you made this game, and you're looking for a way to release it in Germany without going to prison. And Fair. yeah, you yeah. W one could do that, right? Um, but do you think that's something you'd like to still follow after having this talk, or are you now, right now, thinking, well, maybe, maybe just like the rest of the world is enough for us? Well, actually. Um Actually, it's been absolutely uh, awesome being here at Amaze. Not because we won, which is also Amaze, but because uh, I've met so many people like Thorsten and, and, and Kai Malta, like so many like legal advice. We are definitely trying to find a way, and, and there's been like awesome days, which like we really found people giving us like really valuable information and possibly going with us through the process. So we are definitely trying to. We are still trying to find a solution to publish the game legally, uncensored and not going to prison, uh, definitely. Uh, it's actually, the issue is actually larger because this is the first game in a series. We actually, in Czech Republic, we created three games which are already out, are already are used by Czech schools, and we want, would like to turn all of them into commercial products. And the second one, uh, which are we working on its translation and like contextualization right, right now, is actually about the post-war aftermath in Czechoslovakia. So it's a game which talks about the expulsion of Sudeten Germans from Czechoslovakia, about the rise of communists to power, and about the collectivization, the, 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 yeah. And again, we are using like memories of Czechs and Germans from, from Sudetenland, from, from the, from the border, border region. Of course, we would love to publish this game also in Germany, uh, because it's very relevant to, to, to German public. And the third game is about 68, uh, 1968 and, and the Prague Spring. Again, based on real memories of people who lived through that period. So it's a long project, it's, which will last several years. So hopefully, if the situation changes, uh, at least the third game can be published in, in Germany or maybe uh, in, in some future. future. So we are like not working about, only about this game. It's like a longer project of educational and serious and critical games, which we have kind of in, in the mind and would like to publish globally also to German audience. Maybe you can use the first game to go to court, and then when you finish with that, you release <laughs> the last game also here in Germany. Well, um, I have one last question to the to the audience because um, while preparing for this panel, I saw through the darkest times of paint bucket games in Berlin. Is one of paint bucket games here? Maybe, maybe no. That's a game also playing uh, during the uh, Second World War, and they went for like a uh, red flag with white and nothing in it. So is anyone here who ever made a game that had to decide how to do a German version? I would be really interested in that. No, that, that's a pity. That, that yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. Okay, if you two could very shortly tell us what you did and why you did it the way you did it. In, in the microphone. Please, thank you. I made a couple of action games, and these um, um, also. I made I made a couple of action games, and these are also kind of tuned down for the Germany. So, at least it used to be like that. I don't know if it is the case. So you, you made a game, and then you said, "Okay, I, I want German players I, to play I it," and then I for just a big publisher. It. So ah, okay. So they they did it. I didn't do it that directly. Is, is but it, I, okay? Is, is it discussed, or is it like, is that just a matter of fact? Okay, we're doing the game, we're doing the German version, we don't even speak about it, we tone it down, because well, we know that's the well, way it has to be. For us, it was a, just a small part of the market. We, okay. th these games were published globally, so I, I, at the time I didn't care that much about it, and it was not that important. This is more important, this is very important. Yes. Because this is, this is just bullshit, you know, that, that the anti-Nazi game can't be published in Germany, if I, the same, very same images you can see all around. If you will go to the box store, these images will be there. If you will go, if you will switch the TV on, uh, there is endless stream of uh, documentaries about Nazi regime. Why g g games are excluded? Because there is a fear from the medium. 
they think that there is something, the mixture of interactive medium um, and Nazi images create something more... Oh, we, we, we would have to, have to have another panel to talk about the fear <laughs> of the medium. Um, but, but really, after, after, even, also after this panel even more, I have, I have the feeling it's not even the fear of the medium, it's just like, okay, this is the way it has been in the last 30 years, we just continue to do it like that. Very German. Yes, very German, right. <laughs> You don't need swastikas to know who German is. You see it because they do it like they always do. Okay. I did, I did this sign with my hand because my game was not a commercial release. That, that. Uh, I, um, after Wolfenstein 2 came out uh, and I saw the censorship in, uh, in Germany, and maybe you don't know that, I'm from Tel Aviv, and there, there is uh, even harder self-censorship in Israel uh, they, they just this, did not publish the game in Israel at all. Not because there's any laws, just because they're, um, I guess, afraid of what the Jews will say. <laughs> um, so uh, I made a game with the two other developers, which is basically uh, uh, an indie DLC for Wolfenstein 2, the, the latest release. We just released the parts that were cut out of the German version as a gift from... <laughs> <laughs> from us Israelis to the German gamer public. Uh, uh, so it's basically a game that promises you that you are a Jew, you're fighting Nazis for sure, and then you get to shoot Hitler's mustache uh, for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, and we made it, so it was made in German for the German uh, public uh, with a I don't speak German, but I have a German friend who's actually also here somewhere in the festival, and he uh, he uh, wrote it for us, and, um, and and then we translated it to Hebrew and and to English, so the so other crowds can enjoy it. But it was made specifically for the German market, as uh, uh, bridging the gap of what uh, Germans didn't get uh, in Wolfenstein too. <laughs> What was the title again? Wolfenstash. <laughs> Wolfenstash. Go play it. It's really great. I, I did it. Thank you. Very cool. So, we have to, to come to an end. Um, last question is, I think this game, Attentat 1942, maybe if you if you would go on court and do that, it would be very easy because it's like the Schindler's list of computer games, in a way. Um, would you like to do it only for those kind of games, or do you think uh, when it has to be done, it has really to be done for all games? I want to ask yeah. each three of you. That's a really good question, and uh, personally, uh, I would like to like definitely open the door for like games which are educational, uh, which are based on res research and are historically accurate. Uh, and the question, if like all games, you know, all games whatsoever team uh, should be um, should be like considered an art form in Germany and therefore protected for use of the symbols, that's kind of I think uh, that's on the German public to you know really discuss and decide, and kind of not, not on me. Uh, and I can see a lot of like layers to that to that to this debate because you have many games which, uh, for example, first-person shooters, um, which uh, uh, or strategy game which kind of fetishize uh, or uh, like uh, romanticize war, and I, ca I can see like or they like exclude the civilian perspective, you know, by, by, by default. And I can see like some problematic elements of, of these games dealing with uh, you know allowing you, for example, to playing the other side, etc., etc., without showing the civilian casualties and without showing the real consequences of war. So there is some kind of like, uh, like so there's like, f like filters, like many, many action games actually filter war in a, in a, in a, in a very problematic way. Yeah, um, and uh, that's so, so I'm not sure if I would like to open the door for like, you know, ab absolutely any, any game, but I think the discussion has to be made primarily here in Germany by, by, by German public. Uh, okay, thank you. Marie? Thank you. No? <laughs> nothing. Uh, nothing to add? Okay. <laughs> Kai? Um, yes, we'll, we'll need to, to apply the law we have in accordance with the Constitution. We need to open the medium also for these kind of symbols, and we need a control instance that decides what is within the scope of the law and what is outside of the law. We need uh, we need that, and we need to 
treat movies the same way we treat games. So yes, we'll need to open the medium. Okay. Thank you very much. Kai has to leave real fast, real soon, so we have to stop, but you other both, you are still here? Yes. People can talk to you if they want about the topic of it? Okay, and Arthur has a, a booth there. So, thank you for being here, thank you for discussing with us. Thank you for being here and discussing with us, and have a nice rest of the maze.